So today, we're gonna do the laminar flow table. And in the laminar flow table, I'm gonna set up the ranking half body. This flow table is really Healy-Shaw flow. So Healy-Shaw flow is laminar flow between two parallel plates. And then we're gonna inject dye as the source. So we're gonna set up the ranking half body. Okay, so how this works is, I've got this table, and this table, underneath there's a large reservoir of water. A pump moves this water through uh, a flow gauge, so I can see how fast it's flowing, up to this inlet section of the table. The water fills up, and then just due to slight hydrostatic pressure, the water flows between the two plates back to this catch reservoir and recirculates. In order to generate the source, I'm going to use this graduated cylinder with a little bit of water and food color, and I'm going to inject via this little tube into the lower plate. In order to visualize the flow, I'm just going to use some basic food color in here with some water. And I'll put the drops in there. And this will be what we use to visualize the source. Knowing how much water flows through this tube is important because that's really the, our, our, the magnitude of the point source. So I'll know the flow velocity, the magnitude of the point source, and I should be able to set up a ranking body, uh, and we should be able to model it analytically. All right, turn the motor on. Open the valve. So between these two plates is our flow field. Let's uh, turn on the die. It's going to look cool as it comes down here. And you can see it's already coming in through the point source. Although I know what the flow rate is, volume flow rate is, I'd like to measure the local velocity. And to do this, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to put a ruler on the flow field. And then I'm going to perturb the flow and watch how long it takes the perturbation to come through. So I've created a disturbance in the flow. And I can watch that disturbance propagate downstream. That'll tell me how fast the local flow field is. Looks like we're going about 22 seconds per foot. Cool. So I know what the local flow field is. I can measure the drop in the ink over time to know what the source strength is. And with the photographs that we just took, I'd like to now uh, do an analysis and see how well we can match what we saw on the flow table with the analytic solution. So let's try that next. So this is a video of the flow. And you can see um, here we're just starting it up. There's some transients as the, uh, as the ink comes in and uh, we reach steady state. You can see this flashing red and blue light are the reflections from the GoPro camera. And uh, on this flow, or underneath this flow, I've superimposed this grid here. And the larger grid marks uh, are about one centimeter uh, between each one of those large gaps, just, just for a spatial reference. The, the ink flows in uh, with this tube, which is under the uh, lower plate of the uh, laminar flow table, and is delivered uh, into the flow field here. So this is the location of the point source right there. Um, as a result of being superimposed with the, with the free stream velocity, big U, you can see that we get this beautiful ranking body shape that we derived in class. So this right here represents the body shape, and it is the stagnation streamline psi sub s that we derived in class. Uh, you can also see that uh, clearly we've got a, sta a standoff distance between the stagnation location and the point source location. So this is this value A that we derived in class. And also, you can see that the body itself has thickness. It appears to have kind of come to a steady state thickness here. And this is our 2 times h max thickness here. So all the essential features are basically captured in our laminar flow table. If I were to take a still image of this, you would see uh, this is what it looks like. So we can kind of do some analysis with this. 
Here's our free stream velocity, 0.781 centimeters per second, and our volumetric flow rate, about 0.18 cubic centimeters per second. So together, uh, those two are our free stream inlet and our point source. So we know this, we know the velocity, we know the volumetric flow rate, but we don't know what L is here. We could assume that L, which is the line length of the point source, is the gap between the upper and lower plate. That's not such a great assumption because we observe in the experiment that what appears to happen is that the ink jets up and hits this upper plate and then spreads out. So really what we need to know is how much does this ink spread out across the upper plate. So we can solve for this by equating what's the stagnation distance and what's the observed uh, stagnation distance? So here's our point source in our free stream. And we can solve for this L value by equating the uh, analytic solution for the stagnation location. It's given here. That's the volumetric flow rate per unit length over 2 pi times the free stream. And so we can observe what the stagnation distance is set it equal to our expression, and then simply solve for L. So here is our still image. This is the distance and stagnation location, about 0.6 centimeters. So I can rearrange our algebraic equation for the stagnation location and solve for L. And I get about 0.063 centimeters. That's quite thin. As a reference, the gap between the plates is about a quarter inch, which is about 0.6 centimeters. So it's a tenth. The die that you see here in this image is about uh, only a tenth of the thickness uh, between the gaps in the plates. So I can take this data now, and uh, I can go into MATLAB, and I can program in our streamline, and I can plot what the streamline looks like given this flow rate given this free stream velocity, and given this line length for the, for the point source. When I do that, and I can superimpose then the image that we get onto the photograph, and this is what I see. I've stretched this out so that it exactly falls on the, uh, that the origin falls directly onto the point source. So this is the streamline, it's this dark red line. And you can see that although it captures the location of the stagnation point, which it should because we fit it uh, to do so, it doesn't do a good job in following the body. This is, this is pretty interesting. So the assumption that we made about the thickness, the line source thickness, uh, neglecting the viscosity for an irrotational flow, uh, you can see that there is some variation between this, which is an irrotational uh, ideal flow, and what we see in the laminar flow table, the actual viscous flow solution. So the two don't exactly line up, but the essential features are captured, and uh, the flow field is pretty representative of our simple solution. So I hope you enjoyed the ranking half body, and next time we'll do a demonstration to illustrate some other flow field.